Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we're gonna to talk about a couple of new makeup items. They have been out for a little while and you know I think they definitely deserve some attention. So we have the new Bobbi Brown Brightening Blushes. There are four shades that were released in the United States. There's actually a fifth shade, but it is not available here in the US. And then we're also gonna take a look at the Estee Lauder Pure Color Lipsticks. So I have not worn Estee Lauder in many, many years. And yeah, I had to try these lipsticks. So I bought a ton. So we're gonna go through a lot of swatches and so forth. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with the brightening blushes. So right now, let's go ahead and look at some cheek demos here. And with the cheek demos, you can see that on the right side of my face, I used an undyed goat hair, kind of like a round blush brush for each of these. So a new brush for each shade, so there's no color contamination. And I started off going into the larger compartment of the blush. So the shade on the left that's gonna take up, you know, it takes up about two thirds of the, the actual palette. And I put that down as a base. And then I used the two smaller shades, the two skinnier stripes, as you know, kind of a contour and highlight shade in a way. So one of the application techniques, this is one of their recommended techniques. You put down that base color and then you use the deeper shade of the blush at, kind of on the bottom to kind of contour that a little bit. Not actually in the contour area of the face, but just contouring that blush portion and then the lighter shade for highlight. So we did that on the right side of the cheek and then on the left side, we mix it all together. So you really get kind of that more radiant glowing blush. So I used a clean brush for each and then you could see afterwards that I really built up that color so you can see on deeper skin tones how deep of a color you could actually get with each of these shades. And I have to say the lightest one is definitely going to be the brightening pink shade. Now, just a little bit about these blushes. These are limited edition and they actually have been out in the past. So if you look back like on Instagram, my friend Jennifer at Just Glow Firefly, she actually showed me this. These were out, you know, it was actually when I was doing a break from makeup when my youngest daughter was born. So they came out then, they were limited edition and they just brought them back now. They're part of the Lux line, but again, they are limited edition, so they won't be sticking around. They had different names, but the colors do look the same. And this time they're called the Brightening Blush and we have 6.6 .6 grams of product in each. They are made in Japan. There is no estimated shelf life uh, anywhere on the box or the product. So just something to note, when you actually look at the compact, and I'll show you that when we get to the arm swatches, just a minute, but it is a magnetic compact, is gold like your traditional Bobbi Brown Lux packaging. We do have a mirror in there and it comes with, you know, a little piece of, you know, the plastic tape that goes on the mirror that you can pull off. So there is no room for a brush or applicator in the actual packaging, which for me is totally not a problem. I actually prefer it that way. Now, as we are looking at these demos, let's talk a little bit more about the actual product here. These retail for 48 US dollars. And as I mentioned, there are technically five shades available in this blush, but only four available in the United States. And according to Bobbi Brown, this is how they are representing the blushes. We have three shades of multi-dimensional color in one to brighten cheeks and enhance skin tone for an instant lit from within look. And they, these are all shimmering shades that instantly brighten while pearlescent powder enhances skin with a semi-transparent luminosity. And these are going to be a buildable blush, which is pretty obvious when I build up the color. So overall, I have to say, I really like all of these. And even the deepest shade, the Brightening Burgundy, you can see I really toned it down. That's the one that I'm wearing today in the video. So in the major portion of the video, I have that on. And actually I did my makeup six and a half, almost seven hours ago at this point. And that's, that, that's how it's wearing, you know, like this is what it looks like. I have absolutely no touch-ups. I add a little bit of lip gloss on top of the lipstick, uh, just for a little moisture for the video, but you can see, you know, 
nothing else has changed. So everything holds up really well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some arm swatches now. All right, so this one here is blushed bronze. And you can see here that this major portion actually has a bit of a pink hue. So it's a really beautiful, like neutral bl blush shade. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and we're gonna swatch each of the three shades in there individually, and then we'll do the, uh, you know, a fourth swatch there with just all of them together. So these will be the three individually. And if we mix them all together, this is what that's going to look like. And you can see that you have a little bit more shimmer there. Now these are brightening blush, and you can see that there is shimmer in all of these. None of these are going to be matte. If you use just the larger portion on its own, it's slightly more matte, but there is still gonna be a satin sheen. There's no real actual glitter or shimmery particles in that larger portion. But when you mix them all together, you'll definitely see that because the two smaller shades in each pretty much all have some of those more like pearlescent shimmery particles. So overall, I have to say they are really beautiful, but it's still gonna be more of a subtle shimmer. And let's take a look at this one. This is blushed pink. And I really like this one. I think it's just a really beautiful, soft pink shade. Look at that. So you can see here that we have kind of um, almost like a carnation pink. This is more of a coral shade there for the deeper one. And then we have this like peachy highlight here. So these two deeper shades here are gonna be a little bit warmer while the main pink one is gonna be a bit cooler. Looking at these first ones, you know, you can see that that main shade here in the blush bronze is actually going to have a little bit of red in there, a little bit of pink. It's kind of like a dusty rose. Then we go into a cooler brown and then a warmer bronze shade for the highlight. When you mix it all together, you get just kind of this beautiful dusty bronze kind of shade with a little bit of shimmer. Now when we mix the pink ones together, you can see that we get almost more of a warm pink, slightly coral kind of vibe. And you can see that the sheen in there with the shimmer has a little bit of a golden hue to it. By the way, if you mix all of these together and then you want to use them individually, they actually wipe away very easily with a microfiber cloth. You can just very gently go over the surface and it will remove any sort of uh, color that kind of mixed in there. So that's something that's really nice about this formula here. This one here is blushed coral and you can see how similar that is to the deeper shade in the pink. Those are gonna be very, very close. Let me go ahead, I'll swatch those side by side in just a minute. And then we have kind of this lighter, warm, peachy pink shade, and we have a soft golden highlight. So this is blushed coral. And when we mix those all together, I mean, this is like the perfect shimmery coral shade. When you mix them all together, it gets a little bit warmer than when you just have that coral shade on its own. All right, and let's just isolate this coral shade. Oops. <laughs> In the, this is from the dark pink palette, and you can see how close that is to the main shade in the blushed coral. And then last up, we have blushed burgundy. And I have to say, I thought this was gonna be uh, more red than it actually is. You can see we do have kind of like a, it is a soft burgundy here, but there is a little bit of brown in there. And when you mix the two smaller shades in with this, you really get more brown in there. You can see we have a kind of like a shimmery caramel, and then this is really more of a coppery bronze. And then when you mix them all together, you can see you get a lot more of that like coppery burgundy shade and it really actually lightens the color quite a bit. So just something to note there, but I think all four of these are really beautiful shades and I personally like them either on their own if I don't want that much shimmer, there's still like a little bit of a sheen but nothing, you know, super shimmery or all mixed together. But when I like to use them on their own, honestly, most likely I'm usually not gonna go into the skinnier shades. You know, I'll probably just go into the larger portion on its own and use a separate highlighter, just because it is kind of a pain to get into those narrow columns there. 
So when I first saw the brightening blushes, the first thing they reminded me of are the RMS. These are the Redimension Hydra Powder blushes. So formula wise, these are different. So the Bobbi Brown is more like a traditional powder formula blush, whereas this is more of a gel powder. This shade here is French Rosé. And let's go ahead and we'll put that one right here. You can see that it is going to be not quite the same as any of these. It's actually more like a pinker version of the coral, but it's much deeper and more pigmented than just the pink shade on its own. It's also a little bit warmer. Now, what I wanna bring your attention to though is actually the sheen there. These are gonna have a higher, stronger sheen to them. There's a little bit more of that pearlescent look to it. You have just a little bit more um, you know, shimmer in it than you do with the Bobbi Brown. And let's look at just a couple other colors. This one here is Hanky Panky. And I wanted to see how this one compared to the Blush Burgundy, but this has more berry in it. There's a little bit more purple. And you can see when I move my arm, you really get more of that like purpley berry, you know, kind of like a blackberry color to it. Like there's almost like a color shift. And this one here is Maiden's Blush, which is a really beautiful cinnamon color. And let's go ahead and put this one right here next to the Bobbi Brown in Blushed Bronze. And you can see that that's actually, it's a little bit more pink than all of them mixed together. And it has a little, you know, it's a little bit deeper, a little bit more cinnamon than just the first shade there but there are definitely similarities there. So I do think it's close enough. Now remember the RMS though are gonna be more shimmery on the cheeks. You're definitely going to have more glow from those than you will from the Bobbi Brown. The Bobbi Brown is going to be more subtle. I also wanted to take a look at Chanel Jersey Blush and compare this to Blushed Bronze. So we're gonna go ahead and put that right there. And you can see that it is gonna be warmer in tone than any of these. It's actually closest to this shade here, the first skinny shade in the blush bronze, but it's a lot lighter and there's a little bit more pink in it. So color depth wise though, they are the closest. This one here is Chanel Rose Ecran. And both the Jersey and the Rose Ecran, by the way, are the older formula. The newer ones are just a little bit warmer in tone and you can see rose acran it's just a little bit rosier than this but it's very close i would say that kind of a mix of rose acran and jersey is your base shade in the blushed bronze this is guimauve from surat and this pink shade here made me think of the base pink in the blush pink but you can see it's actually going to be cooler and a little bit brighter than the bobby brown this is Seurat's La Vie en Rose, and I wanted to see how this compared with the blushed burgundy here. You can see it's gonna be a little bit of a softer shade. It doesn't have quite as much of that brick tone as the base shade in blushed burgundy, but they are pretty close. There is definitely a similarity in the color, but the Bobbi Brown's gonna be deeper and just has a little bit more uh, of that like earthy brick tone to it than the Surat does. One more Surat shade, this is Ponceau, and this is one of my favorite Surat shades. I use this one a lot. I want to compare that to the Blushed Coral, and you can see that those are incredibly close. And I have to say, actually, the Blushed Coral is my choice out of these four. I actually prefer the Blushed Coral then the blush bronze, blush pink, blush burgundy. That's kind of my preference of these. And I have to say though, I really do love all four of them. I would not hesitate to purchase all four of them again, but uh, the blush coral has kind of stolen my heart. I think it just gives the face a nice brightening look to it. And I can't really say I'm surprised that it's so similar to Ponceau because that is one of my favorite blushes like ever. This one here is the Gucci blush in number six, Warm Berry. And I wanted to take a look at that with the blush burgundy. You can see those are pretty close. This is gonna be a little bit deeper, just slightly more berry in it versus the bronze burgundy base shade. This is number three, Radiant Pink from Gucci. And I have to say most of the Gucci blushes actually are not gonna match up with these, but I did wanna take a look at a couple of them. 
and um, yeah you can see it's still dustier again these are gonna be more of a matte finish regardless so the finish will be different but I was hoping that it might match one of these but really it doesn't and then this is five rosy beige this is one of my favorite blushes right now I reach for this one quite a bit and I wanted to compare this one up here with the blushed bronze palette and yeah no this is definitely going to be more nude, more brown in there, and yet it doesn't quite go with the burgundy either, but let's re-swatch that down there, see if it compares to one of the lighter shades here. Mm, nope, the tones are just completely different, so it's not going to, not going to be a good uh, representation. And then we also have this Hermes blush in 61, Rose Fieu. And I wanted to compare this one with the burgundy, but I think, yeah, it's got too much red. So the tone is off with that. This is Sisley Fido Blush in Five Rosewood, one of my very favorite blushes. I wear this one a lot. Let's go ahead and put it right there. Yeah, you know, it's kind of close. This is gonna be a little bit cooler in tone, has a little bit more purple, whereas this has more red, a little bit more brown. But there is, you know, there, there's a similarity there. This one here is the Sisley in Coral. Let's see how that compares. We'll stick that right there. It's close, but it's got more orange. The Bobbi Brown Coral is going to have more pink. And this is number one in Sisley Pink Peony. Let's see how this stacks up. Uh, it's going to be a warmer pink. I can already tell that's not going to match. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... It's just, it's a warmer pink, so definitely not quite right. I feel like the swatches are getting a little messy, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna take an eyeliner, we're gonna divide up which ones are which Bobbi Brown shades. All right, so just to reiterate, here we have the blush bronze, blush pink, blush coral, blush burgundy. And one more, this is Paradise Venus from Pat McGrath. Let's just see how that one compares to the blush burgundy. Mm, you know, it might be close enough. It's a little bit warmer, but it does, it, it's very similar to the base shade there. Very similar to these mixed together if you, um, you know, mix in a little bit of shimmer. And then let's just take a look at Desert Orchid from Pat McGrath as well. We'll put that up here with the, let's squeeze that in right here with the blush bronze. Mm, it might be close enough, but it does have a little bit more of a golden undertone to it than the base shade and a little bit rosier than when they're all mixed together. So I don't think it's quite right, but it is fairly close. All right, so that's gonna be it for the blush comparisons. And I have to say overall, I really do like these Bobbi Brown Brightening Blushes. I think they are really nice. I like how, you know, you can get more of just a soft satin sheen if you just use the base shade, or, you know, you can get that shimmery blush, but it's still not gonna be super shimmery. So definitely not shimmery as the RMS, but it's gonna give you a kind of that subtle glow and you can build it up you can definitely get more shimmer depending on how much you use from that but for the most part i think it is just kind of a nice touch i think it's really great for kind of spring and summer in particular so i really like them i think the formula is great i've been wearing them for a couple of weeks so i can tell you that they do hold up all day and i haven't had any issues with like any shimmer particles like transferring to other portions of my face or anything. Now, I don't typically wear any additional highlight with this. This is really more just if I'm going for a shimmery cheek look. And just a close up of the Bobbi Brown Compact before we move on to the lipsticks. You can see we do have gold. It is a fingerprint magnet. And this just opens up, it's magnetic. We've got the mirror here. You can pull this off and there we go. Let me just clean this one off. So you can see it's very easy to just kind of wipe away any mix in blush and you got the beautiful, you know, tricolor blush here. Really beautiful, nice magnetic closure. Now, moving on to the Estee Lauder, let's take a look at their packaging real quickly. So we have the Estee Lauder logo there and we do have kind of this um, square shaped tube, except it bulges out in the center here. So this is going to be magnetic as well. And this is what their lipstick bullets look like. You do have the Essay Lauder logo on the top. You can't really see this one as much on here. I've worn this one a couple of times. I've been testing these for a couple of weeks as well. Let's take a look at the lip demos and then we'll move on to arm swatches. 
So Estee Lauder is not really a brand that I typically go to very often. I actually haven't worn them in many years now. And you know, it's not really like when I see new releases from them, they usually don't interest me, but these lipsticks really did for two reasons. One, they have an incredible array of colors. So the colors are, you know, they've got a ton of colors and they really range the spectrum and we've got cooler and warmer tone shades, which I feel like a lot of brands, even when they say they've got the cool tones, they are really, they're really still warm. Uh, think Chanel. <laughs> Chanel doesn't really have any cool tone light shades. They are all, the cooler shades are typically deeper. Their lighter tone shades are typically warmer. That's true for a lot of brands. And, you know, Estee Lauder really, that's not how it is with this, uh, you know, these lipsticks. We have a ton of shades and, you know, we have the whole spectrum of undertones and everything. So that really, really called to me. And then we also have a variety of different finishes. So let's take a look at these. These are going to retail for 36 US dollars. There are actually four finishes that they have in this lipstick. We've got matte, cream, there's high luster, and crystal. Now I do not have anything with a crystal finish. There's actually only one shade with the crystal finish. And I believe they had one of these lipsticks before and they just reformulated it. So I don't think the shade itself is new. I could be wrong on that. But the crystal is gonna have a medium coverage and it's basically just gonna be a lustrous, shiny lipstick. And it comes in kind of this peachy shade called crystal. So, um, you know, I didn't pick up that one. I've actually only seen that one available on the Estee Lauder website directly so far, but honestly, these lipsticks have been selling out, you know, since they launched. So I ended up having to order from, I placed four different orders to get the lipsticks that I have because I would order and then something would get canceled or, or something would go on back order or, you know, it, it was just kind of crazy. And different stores had different shades available because again, you know, some of the shades I really wanted were just selling out everywhere. And it was just, it took a while to get them in. So anyway, the lipsticks themselves are going to be made in Canada. We have 0.12 ounces or three and a half grams of product, which is pretty average for your lipstick. Now these are actually refillable packaging. So just like other refillable lipsticks, you can just pull the tube out and you can snap a new one in. So something to note there. Just like the blushes though, they also do not have a suggested shelf life anywhere on the box or the packaging. So, you know, use your judgment. But let's talk about the actual formulas here. So both the pure color matte and the pure color cream kind of have the same, uh, you know, particular description here. They are both gonna be, actually the high luster as well, are going to be long lasting for 10 hours. So all three of those finishes that I have here are going to last on lips for 10 hours. And I have a little wear clip I'll show you in a minute or a couple of minutes of what it looks like now because this lipstick that I am I have on, as I mentioned, it's not fresh. So before I topped off with gloss, I did take a little clip just to show you what it looks like. So for 10 hours, these are supposed to resist any bleeding, feathering, or creasing. I have to say that has been very accurate. And the matte lipsticks themselves, there are 38 different shades of just the matte lipsticks. So your matte lipsticks here are going to be more of your traditional matte, but they're not really drying on the lips. They will dry down. They will have kind of that dry powder finish to them. They're not gonna dry out your lips. However, if your lips are dry, if you have dry lips and you have dead skin on your lips, these are not gonna help that. They do claim to, they, they claim that they deliver a smooth velvety matte finish. It's a full coverage lipstick, which is definitely accurate and it has plumping, nourishing, and conditioning benefits. Uh, according to Essay Lauder, they have this naturally dried moisture lock complex, and this complex is gonna be included in all of the different finishes, all four of them. It's gonna provide extra lip adoring care while you wear, 
and your lips will look immediately plump and smooth with a more defined and sculpted appearance over time, even after the lipstick is removed. And I have to say with the matte, it's definitely comfortable going on. You can tell it's drying to that powder finish, but once your lips are dry after like a few hours and so forth, and you're really left with just that lip color, it is going to you know, be the same dryness level that your lips are in without any lip balm or anything on. So there's there's no moisturization there, but it's not going to make them worse. So just something to note there. Something else that all of them have in common, all of these, all four of the lip formulas have two uh, more, um, you know, highlighted ingredients essentially here. We have the potent oil blend, which is a combination of red raspberry seed oil, meadow form seed oil, and apricot seed oil. And these are all gonna provide nourishment and conditioning for your lips to keep them comfortable. And we also have the salicornia herbacea extract, which is a plant extract that helps maintain your moisture and comfort over time. And I have to say that even though the matte ones do dry down to kind of this matte dry finish, they are still comfortable. They, you know, it just, feels as though you haven't put anything on your lips. So um, no issue with any, you know, drying them out over time, at least in my experience. Now, as for the cream finish or the creme finish, we have 29 shades there. So again, matte has 38, creme has 29. These numbers might be a little off because I had to count what was available on the Essay Lauder website. So as far as I know, they haven't removed anything that's out of stock, but you know, these, th that's a lot of shades already. You know, we're looking already at over 60 and we haven't even gotten to the high luster yet. So these cream, uh, lipsticks these are also going to be full coverage they really have more of that opaque base but the base shade does seem to kind of you know sometimes you'll have like a base that definitely runs warm or definitely runs cool or is like a bright white and i would have to say that this one really seems like it goes with the color well you don't really notice any additional undertones coming out purely due to the base of the lipstick but it is going to be an opaque lipstick it is going to be kind of your creamy formula it's a satin finish but again it's not going to be any sort of lustrous satin finish which you know, I tend to see that more with any lipstick that has a little bit more translucency to it. Since this one is gonna be our more opaque, it is more like your traditional cream lipstick. It's very comfortable. I have to say it is long wearing. After a few hours, you will have kind of that, you know, uh, top level layer of, you know, moisturization that you have there, that, that level of the lipstick. That will wear away and you're left with kind of that stain, but it doesn't look like it's a lipstick stain per se, you know, like it doesn't look like your lipstick has worn off. It looks intentional. So I have to say that that is really incredible and you really do only need one swipe of the lipstick with both the matte and the cream formula. Now, moving on to the high luster finish, we have 10 shades in this and this is gonna be a shimmering color that creates dimension a uh, glistening shine, medium coverage. So this one's medium coverage instead of full coverage. And you can see that you've got a little bit more translucency here to this base. And this is gonna have instant plumping conditioning benefits. So these are gonna be your shimmery, sparkly lip uh, lipsticks. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to some arm swatches where you can see all of these in just a minute. But overall, I would have to say that I think these Estee Lauder lipsticks are really nice. And, you know, I purchased some of these from Nordstrom. I also purchased from the Estee Lauder website. They were, they had a really great gift with purchase at the time. And, uh, you know, that's actually a great way to get a deal on them. So definitely look into these because these do retail for $36, which, you know, and you can get these on sale, it can make them, you know, a pretty good bargain. So overall, I have to say that these are a really nice lipstick. I'm actually very impressed. And let's move on to those arm swatches. Oh, before we move on to the arm swatches though, I just wanted to share the gift with purchase I got from the Estee Lauder website. So it doesn't look like it's available there right now, um, but in case it comes back or something similar to it, I personally really like the pattern in the bag and it does come with this lipstick. So you've got this one here. Look, you've got the flowers even here on the tube and this shade, I'm gonna put this one on my hand. This one is called Blushing Rose. And 
you can see that there. Let me just build that up a little bit so you can see that more opaque. This one's gonna be a medium coverage. And yeah, I think it's really nice. Let me just show you the lip swatch of this one and also include it in this. You know, I have to say the gift with purchases on there, it's like you've seen them before at department stores and so forth. You know, you spend like $65 and you get this gift with purchase, but if you spend 85, you also get this for free. And then if you spend, you know, whatever, you get this for free also. So I was able to get like a couple full size skincare products. And then also in this bag, we have you know, travel size skincare, or, you know, travel size mascara. You've got the night repair from them and a cleanser and then that little lipstick. Uh, you know, we also had the, what is this, an eye cream and a neck cream. So, you know, I thought it was a really nice gift with purchase, especially, you know, because they have all those tiers and it was like a $20 difference between them to get like full size skincare items. So it was kind of like a no brainer. Let's go ahead and take a look real quickly at the wear test. So you can see what the lipstick kind of looks like after six and a half hours, but I can tell you now that this is what it looks like later on as well. So this was after eating a meal, you know, I went out, we had paella and so forth and yeah, um, nothing, nothing budged, nothing came off on my glass. You know, it's really great. Now, this was the matte lipstick that I was wearing. Mostly I had a little bit of, you know, one of the creams mixed in there, but I I made a concoction of a few different shades. So uh, yeah, I have to say overall, real, they wear really well. So let's go ahead and move on to the lipsticks and we're gonna start off with the cream formulas. So this one here is 410 Dynamic. And you can see that this is going to be a warm rose shade. So it's going to be rose. There is going to be a warm undertone in there. And you can see, let me just show you how this compares to the shade in the gift with purchase. You can see that the gift with purchase shades a little bit more nude, but they are going to be fairly similar. This is 441 rose tea. And you can see, again, this is gonna be a little bit similar, but this has a little bit more brown in there. It's also gonna be, you know, slightly, yeah, yeah, you can see it's a little bit more nude. It's like a rosier version of the shade from the gift with purchase. So I think those are kind of my two closest to that. And then we also have 692 Insider. This is the one, well, this is one of the three that kept getting canceled for my orders, which is why I ended up placing four, because this was the shade that I wanted the most. And you can see there's a bit of a mauve purpley tone to this. This is gonna be cooler in tone, and it's just an absolutely gorgeous shade. We also have 822 Make You Blush. And you can see that this one has a little bit of peach in there. So this is gonna be a warmer pink, but it's gonna be softer in tone than the first one, Dynamic. So those are my cream shades. Let's take a look at the High Luster before we move on to the mattes. This one here is 221 Pink Parfait. And you can see how sheer that is there. Let me just go ahead. We'll just go over this back portion a bit so you can build that up. And you can see how much sheen and shimmer you get with that. And if you look at the actual bullet here, you can see that pearlescent quality. One of the things I like about this is this is truly a pearlescent lipstick. Very, very subtle. There's no grittiness or texture on the lips. So you're getting that shine, you're getting that sparkle without any glittery chunks, which you know can look beautiful, but drive me crazy after I've had them on for a little while. So I find these to be much more comfortable. This one's 546 Angel Lips, and this is gonna be a peachy shade here. And you can see it's kind of your traditional peach with just a touch of pink in there. And this is 565 Starlet Pink. And I love this one. This one's one of my favorites. You can see this is kind of your brighter pink with, you know, with a pop. Has a little bit of magenta in there. And I just think this is gorgeous. You can almost use it as a soft red. You know, if you are somebody who wanted something more like a soft red, put a red lip pencil underneath this and you really do get kind of that soft shimmery red there. It's so gorgeous. 
Now let's take a look at the matte lipsticks. So we're going in numerical order. Um, so we actually have our reds first. This one here is 606 Red Ego. And I really like this one. It's a neutral red. And I just think it's just a nice classic neutral red. You've got kind of that balance of warmth and coolness there. And it's just a classic shade. And then we also have 612 Lead You On. And this one here is gonna be a cooler tone, blue base red. You can see you've got kind of a little bit of that fuchsia look in there. It's just a really pretty classic blue red. 688 Idol. This is our purple berry tone here. And really, I think it's a really beautiful shade here. Just kind of your classic berry with some purple in there. It's definitely gonna be cool in tone. Then we have 809 Secret Scandal. And this was one that I couldn't tell what it looked like online because in some photos it looked brown and in others it looked more mauve. And you can see it's really kind of like this cinnamon shade there. There is a slight touch of, you know, a cool undertone in there. There's like a little bit of berry kind of mixed into the base there, but it's really more of this brown cinnamon and I think it's really unique. So it's actually gonna be fairly neutral, but it's gonna lean just a little bit warm. That's the major base shade that I have on my lips today. And then we also have Suit Up. This is also one that I'm wearing. And this one's 816. And you can see this is gonna be kind of a lighter nude shade. You've got a little pink in there. It's kind of like a dusty nude mixed with dusty rose. Here's 855 Risk It All. And this is one I've been wearing a lot just because it's kind of your nice soft matte pink. It is a classic rose. And if you see it compared with these others, this is kind of like your classic tea rose. And this one here is 868 Influential. This was another one that kept getting canceled. And again, this one I thought was gonna be a bit more mauve than it actually is, but you can see it's really gonna be more of this like nude shade here and it has a little bit of uh, like almost a touch of red mix in there just like a tiny bit but it's going to be kind of like a lighter cinnamon shade it's kind of like a lighter version of secret scandal so these are all of the ones i picked up i have to say i was really impressed with the color range and yeah i you know i Got a couple at first, really liked them, and then went and ordered more. So uh, yeah, you know, if you are looking for lipsticks, these might be a great one to try out, especially if you are, you know, looking for some cooler, lighter tone shades. I think this range has some really great colors in there. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you very soon. So have a wonderful day.